Hey guys, Pogo here, and welcome to the next episode of Bucket Coding. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to add an automatic updater to uh, your plugins. I have open right here Magic Battle, uh, which I've recently uh, continued to work on, if you saw my video recently about resuming work on it. And uh, in this episode, we're going to add an automatic updater to it, uh, which is also a good example for any other... Uh, automatic, uh, any other plugins that need an automatic updater. So if we go ahead and take a look, first of all, I do have it here on Bucket Dev. I have this page right here, and I do have the first, uh, I have version 1.0 uploaded uh, to Bucket Dev. So that's the page. And uh, if we go ahead and take a look here in these project submission guidelines, um, and you take a look about take a look at all of these different things there is a section right here on automatic updating and downloading and basically what this says is that if you're going to do anything with automatic updating it can only interface with bucket dev which means that you can't store the latest version uh, in a paste bin document or on your own website you can't have any uh, jar files on your own server to download everything needs to be done uh, as far on bucket so you can't like have it if you're gonna submit it to bucket dev then you can only have it communicate with bucket dev as far as uh, updating and you know remote version and all that stuff is concerned so in order to abide by this rule um, gravity who is one of the staff members of uh, bucket has created this uh, nice little updater class. It's a single class, I believe, um, that will easily allow you to add updaters. And if you look right here at this one line, uh, this one line is all you need to do to add automatic updating once you have the uh, updater class. And if you take a look at this page, which of course will be in the description, then you'll see all the different descriptions, but we are of course going to go over that uh, right now. So uh, the first thing that we're going to go ahead and do is grab this class. So if you go down here to the second post uh, and the link in the description will automatically take you there, um, we'll go ahead and download the source code. Click there and it'll take you to this repository that has um, updater on it. Uh, go ahead and click on raw and that will give you this as a raw text file so that you can just copy and paste it. Over in the project, we'll go ahead and create a new class, which we'll call updater, since that class is called updater. Go ahead and paste in what you copied. The only error that you should get is the package, and you probably do want to move it into that package. So you'll have your own package, but the updater will have its own. That's optional, but uh, I would recommend doing it. And then, as you can see, uh, there's a lot of inline documentation and everything, so I would leave everything the way it is in here and of course make sure to leave the credit to gravity so we now have the updater class inside of the plugin so let's go to the main part and actually get the automatic updater to run so if we go up a little bit we can take a look and call we can copy this one line or where we instantiate it um, and in fact, we'll just walk through this step by step. So, uh, and so a new updater takes four things, or five things. The first thing that it takes is an instance of the plugin, which is this, and that's used for like um, getting the version number. It compares the version number in plugin.yml to the remote version number. Next is going to be the ID, and in order to find the ID, you need to go to this page on the server mods API, which of course will be in the description. Go down to where it says searching for project IDs. Click right here. This will perform a search for world edit and return that information, but if we change it to search for uh, magic battle in this case, then you should see, if we give it a second, magic battle, the name is magic battle, the slug, which is like the part up in the URL is Magic Battle, so we know that it's the correct project. Uh, it is in the planning stage. I think if you um, see, it's in the planning stage. 
Uh, and then the first thing that you'll see is the ID. So we know that this is the correct ID, and that's the ID that we want. Next is going to be the file to replace. In this case, it's just get file. And what that will do is if it downloads a new version, it needs to know where to put it. So if you do get file, it'll replace the current file with the newly downloaded one. Uh, next is type, and that's going to take, I think, an update type. Now, this is defined in the updater class, and you'll see that um, there are three choices. Default, no download, and no version check. The default, uh, as it says, it will, if the file it checks for the version, if it's out of date, then it'll download the newest version. No download will just check to see if there's a new version, uh, but it doesn't actually do anything. And then no version check will just automatically download without even checking for a version. So chances are you'd probably want to use default, but if you just want to pull information from Bucket Dev and then uh, ask them if they want to update, then you'd probably have a no download that runs to give you the information, then start a default that will actually go ahead and download it. And then as far as the no version check, um, I guess if you were distributing like a beta build and you just wanted it to always get the latest version, then again I'm not quite sure why that would be on Bucket Dev, so you'd probably mostly end up using default, and that's what we're going to use here. Uh, finally, a boolean called announce, and if this is true, then it will log every 10%, uh, so like it'll tell you in the console, downloading Magic Battle, 10% complete, 20%, 30%. Uh, so if you want it to be verbose or not, you can change that there. So if we go ahead and take a look at methods in here, you'll see that there is um, get latest file link, which returns the link to the latest file, the latest game version, like the version of Craft Bucket that it supports, uh, the latest name, like the name of the actual file, so Magic Battle version 1.0, the latest type, this is release type, which is alpha, beta, or release. Um, the result will come back to that. Uh, and then there's also the should update that we'll take a look at. Um, the way that should update works is uh, it takes in the old uh, version and the new version and returns a boolean of whether or not it should be updated. So by default, it just checks if they're not equal. But if you wanted to specifically tell, you could do you could override. Uh, the method and let me just go ahead and quickly find the method it is called let me see if I can find it uh, here we go so if you take a look this is should update that takes the local version and the remote version and all it does is it says if they're not equal then it should update if they are equal uh, then it should not update if you want to be more specific or like you know, maybe your uh, things, maybe your versions are written in a specific manner, then you can override this to return whether or not the local version uh, and remote version, you know, should be updated given that information. So by default, you probably wouldn't want to do that, but uh, if you did, uh, like maybe you use numbers in them and you could just check if they're greater or less than. Uh, so that's an option there that's pretty cool. Um, so now this updater will actually go ahead and run. And if you go ahead and take a look at updater dot um, get result, it'll return a constant inside of updater result, which of course is inside of updater. And you'll see that the uh, the update result is success if it works, no update if it doesn't find an update. And then I'm not going to read them all, but there are a bunch of um, different options. And what we can do um, is you probably want to say that if it if it does not work, then you might want to handle it. So if it says that there's no download available, then you could tell them that it's up to date. Or if it's already updated, you could tell them that it's up to date. Uh, if the updater type returns, or the update type returns like updated, then you know that it was successfully updated, and then you could advise them to reload or restart the server and various things like that so that is also optional so that should work there now one important thing to note is that if we go back to bucket um, the project each the file needs to have a specific name format and it needs to be file or uh, project name v and then version so it needs to look exactly like that, where it's the project name, V, and version, or else uh, the updater will not work. So you need to make sure that it's named like that. Uh, before we export, I'm going to go into here where it says version 1.0, and I'm just going to change it to, let's say, 0.9, because 
if I left this at 1.0, it would be the same as the remote version, and then it obviously would not work correctly. Uh, so if I set it to be different, then it will um, go ahead and update it. So I'm sort of like forcing it to uh, update because the version numbers are different. Uh, let's go ahead and export this. And, okay, let me make sure that we are starting up. Should be good. And I don't really need to log into Minecraft. We're just checking to make sure that this works. Okay, so as you can see, server is starting up. And if you take a look, it says it's about to download a new update. Uh, this is version 1.0 because remember, the version that was given right here is uh, 0 0.9. So uh, it then found the later version. It logged the updating for each 10%. Then it said finished updating. So if I go ahead and reload it again, then you'll see that it uh, is enabling Magic Battle 1.0. And then I'm not... I don't think this... Ignore that, that just has to do with Vault, but uh, basically that time when it downloaded the one, this one up here does not have automatic updating, so it's obviously not going to update. So that's all for this video, just adding an automatic updater, uh, you know, by adding that class and then just this one line right here. You can add automatic updating between this plugin and Bucket Dev, and the best part is that if you have this uh, updater, it will be accepted uh, by Bucket Dev if you want to post this on Bucket Dev. If you don't want to post it on Bucket Dev, you can uh, write your own custom updater that checks your own servers for a version number and uh, binary, but uh, it's up to you. As always, subscribe if you want to see more, comment what you want to learn. If you like this video, click the like button. Um, I'm going to push this update with the uh, updater, automatic updating, to the repository after this video is done. And I'll see you guys soon with some more videos. Bye.